In this tutorial, we'll learn about the new Focus Stacking feature in Corel PaintShop Pro 2023. This technique enables you to blend multiple images of the same scene, taken at different focus distances, to create a final composite with a greater depth of field than any of the individual source images. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. Focus stacking requires multiple shots of the same scene taken at different focus distances. To take the photos you want to use, start with your camera on a tripod or a steady rest. Set your focus to manual, and while shooting the photos, adjust the focal ring to change aperture settings between shots. For landscape photos, we recommend at least three shots, with focus on foreground, midground, and background. For macro photos, like the ones I'll be showing in this example, you'll want at least eight shots, and as many as 20, to capture all of the tiny details. I'm working in the edit space of the PaintShop Pro Complete workspace. You can switch workspaces by clicking the home icon to open the welcome screen and choosing workspace. In addition to the complete workspace, focus stacking is also available in the photography and essentials workspaces. If you change your workspace, click Apply, then return to the Edit space. With no images in my workspace, I'll choose File, Focus Stacking. This opens a separate Focus Stacking interface window with a Getting Started window that explains the process and with a Learn More button that opens the Help article. This window will appear each time you start Focus Stacking until you click the box for Don't Show This Window Again. I'll click Close. Step 1 is to add photos and stack. I have a default image loaded, which I'll remove by clicking the Remove Photos icon. Now I'll click to Add Photos, browse to the folder that contains my 15 stacking images, and bring them all in. Image thumbnails appear in the tray, and as I click through them, we can see that the focus moves from the center of the group of flowers to the middle, then the back. To proceed to the next step, I'll click Stack. After a bit of processing time, I have a new image in the tray called Stacked, which is a composite image that combines the different focus areas from each of the source photos. I'm now in step two, where I can choose areas of focus if I want to make any edits. The image looks nearly perfect, but there are a couple of areas I can fix. First, I want to focus on this small light spot at the edge of the top flower. I'll increase the zoom, then use the Pan tool to bring the spot into the workspace. Here we have a few light pixels where there should be dark background. The image I want to use as the source to paint over this spot is the last one in the tray. So I'll select this image, which has this flower in focus but without that light spot, and click Brush In. I can adjust the brush size with the slider, by entering a value, or by dragging the cursor up or down while holding the Alt key. Moving the cursor over the spot in question shows how the replaced pixels will look, and I'll click and drag to brush in the repair. The other part of the image I want to fix is this little brown spot on the red petal. To find the photo I'll need to select for this fix, I'll turn off Preview Stacking so that I can view the images from the tray. This automatically turns on Show Brush Strokes, which shows, in my brush color, the area that I brushed in for the previous repair. I don't need this entire area, so I'll click Eraser and remove all but the small area I wanted to fix. Back to the brown spot, the image that I'll use for the fix is one of the images toward the end where the outer flowers are in focus. I'll select image 12, which doesn't have the blemish, turn Preview Stacking back on, click Brush In, and brush over the spot. Now I'll click Fit to Window to see the entire image, which looks great, so I'll click Blend to complete the composite. This brings me to step three, Crop and Remove Noise. With Crop, I can adjust the image size by entering Custom Width and Height, or by dragging edges, either with or without Maintain Aspect Ratio checked. Options you may recognize from PaintShop Pro's Crop tool appear here as well, such as Changing Proportion, and Displaying Golden Ratio, Triangle, Grid, etc. I'll click Apply to complete the crop. 
Digital noise removal is also optional. I think the photo looks great as it is. But I could change detail, which ranges from 0 for no noise reduction to 100, which is full processing of the entire image. After any value change, the preview updates after a few seconds of processing. Correction Blend controls the degree to which the corrected image will be blended in with the original. I'll keep the default value of 70. And Sharpening controls what sharpening, if any, is applied to the image after the noise reduction is applied. When I have the results I want, I'll click Finish in PSP. This opens the stacked image back in my PaintShop Pro edit space, where I can continue working with any other image editing tools. With focus stacking, it only takes a few clicks to blend a series of images with different areas of focus to produce a final composite that has a greater depth of field than any of the source images. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on focus stacking in PaintShop Pro. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.